Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Talk Data to Me series on the Data Exchange. Today, we have a very exciting guest, Brian Tom, who's uh, with Data Axle, but has also been in the data industry for over 15 years. So we're very excited to have Brian today and welcome. Yeah, thanks so much, John. I appreciate it. So we like to jump right into conversation. And uh, my, my first question is always, you know, tell us a little bit about Data Axle and just the history of the company. Sure, you bet. Um, Data Axle is actually a, a rebrand and a new company name. Um, you guys have uh, known us as formerly as Info Group, and a couple of our other brands were Info USA, Sales Genie, Yes Mail, Donnelly Marketing back in the day, Polk Directories, Credit.net, American Business Information, if uh, you guys have been around for the data industry for a while. Um, we have um, taken all of those brands and now we are just simply Data Axle. Uh, we were founded in 1972, so have been around for almost 50 years and uh, recognized as a leader in uh, data compilation uh, for both business and consumer data. That's amazing. Well, so my, my next question, I, I'm guessing, could go in many ways because you guys have such a broad both consumer and B2B data set and then some other really unique items. But um, tell us a little bit about you know, what would be an ideal customer profile for you? Um, you know, we work with all companies um, from small mom and pop shops to your Fortune 100. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, top verticals would include insurance, finance, retail, technology, manufacturing, utilities, and uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, but again, we service all companies um, from from large to, to small. And, you know, again, I know this is again a hard question to answer because you have hundreds of ways you help companies solve problems. But, you know, for our kind of B2B or B2C uh, marketing ops, sales ops, strategic audience, you know, what are some of the main problems that you find that you guys help your customers solve in that area? You know, one of the, the main things, John, is dirty data. Um, these companies will have a, a CRM full of information and full of duplicates. They might have companies that are out of business. Um, so we can take that data, hygiene it, and enhance um, customers' data to keep it updated um, and, and accurate. Um, you know, once we do that, we can then profile um, that database. So, you know, a lot of companies that we deal with don't have any idea who their ideal customer is or what their clients look like. So we can build profiles um, and identify uh, for, for segmentation and uh, build personas around those profiles. And then once we have that profile built, uh, we build a model um, or, or what, what we call look-alike audience to go after for acquisition marketing. Um, and, you know, another thing that we help our customers do is, is grow their customer base uh, through direct marketing and lead gen efforts that, that we execute in-house. And uh, we're able to track those efforts as well to, to find out what's working and what's not. That's really, really great. Um, is the data set focused on a specific geographic location? Uh, if you do have a global presence, are there like, you know, places where you're really great at and uh, that you really like to focus on? Yeah, um, U.S. and Canada. Um, Canada is a little bit different in, in compiling uh, for, for rules and compiling their information, but uh, mainly uh, North America, which would be the U.S. and Canada. And, you know, I find that a lot of companies and, and, and customers of ours who are trying to um, find a data vendor for small businesses, right? Like it, it's really, you know, a, a little easier to find people that have job titles that end up on LinkedIn at big companies. But sometimes you've got like mom and pops or coffee shops or whatever that somebody's prospecting into. Um, do you service the SMB data space in the U.S. as well? 
We do. Absolutely. And, and that's kind of where we, where we shine, to be honest with you. Like you said, I mean, there's a lot of uh, sources for larger enterprise type companies. Um, we really take pride in our, in our SMB space. So um, people are seeing our data every single day um, and, and our data is touching people every day. Um, whether you're searching for, for a, a listing online, um, your in-car navigation, uh, uh, points of interest and that sort of thing. So uh, we're able to identify like how a company is known on the street and, and um, a lot like your, just like you said, small coffee shops, um, who's the owner of that coffee shop, even uh, Joe Smith's plumbing, um, what, what's his, uh, he, the address, um, is he working out of home or does he have an actual physical location and that sort of thing is, is uh, we, we can provide as well. That's awesome. And I'm thinking about the, the restaurant vertical as well. Do you have any sort of data on restaurants? We do. So we, we can identify uh, restaurants and by type, was, is it a, a, a pizza place? Is it uh, dine-in, takeout, um, et cetera? And then also with the COVID, um, see Info Data Axel, I'm sorry, I keep saying Info Group. Um, Data Axel actually is one of the only compilers out there that will telephone verify every business within our database up to four times a year. So on those verification phone calls, uh, we're, we're able to identify if a, if a restaurant, for example, is closed. Um, are they permanent, permanently closed? Are they temporarily closed? And what is that uh, projected date to reopen? Um, are they offering dine-in, takeout? Uh, what what type of food that they have and, and that sort of thing as well. Well, it's pretty uh, pretty unique data set. Um, I am going to ask this question, even though if, if if you listen to the whole recording up to this point, you know the answer. But we do cut this into nice little clips. So, uh, what would you categorize your data? Uh, is it B two B, B two C, B two B two C, or you know all the above? So we are both uh, B2B and B2C under one roof. Um, and, and what makes us unique and stand out as well is, is we, since we compile both of those databases, we have the unique capability to cross-reference the two. So now we have a third database called ExecuReach and we're able to identify John Smith and here's his business firmographics. He, he owns ABC company. And then also here's all of his consumer demographics as well, along with that same record and vice versa. I, I'd imagine that that, I'd imagine that that data becomes more valuable and when people start working at home as well, right? It does, uh, you've got 100%. executives at physical locations that you can cross-reference both. It seems like a pretty exciting yep. data point. Yep, exactly. And it's been really, really popular during uh, th this year, as you can imagine. Okay. Um, do you guys uh, consider yourself more of an enrichment provider, list provider, or both? Uh, we are both, John. Um, so we can provide targeted lists using hundreds of different attributes in, in both B2C and B2B environments. Um, as well as enrich current data uh, with those same attributes. Um, you know, we, we do postal hygiene, and, and if, if needed, we have um, direct plugins uh, for, for top CRMs to enhance data in real time right within your contact or account views as well. Very nice. Um, how many business and person records are in the Total database. Total, we have just over 60 million businesses in our database. Um, as I mentioned before, we do telephone verify every record. Um, so so within our verified business database, there's about 17 million records. Um, and we also have historical data that goes back 20 plus years. Um, in regards to people, we've got 310 million people and that execute reach database I talked about with that uh, B2C um, and C2B linkage, uh, we've got about 165 million records uh, that are linked that way as well. Wow. Um, what's the total number of attributes on a business and a person that we can derive from uh, data axle? 
Um, business, we've got roughly 200 attributes on a business record and roughly 300 on a consumer record. Well, it's quite a catalog. So it, over it is. 500 attributes. Yes, um, it, it gets pretty in depth. Yes. Um, do you offer services outside of providing data to customers? Uh, we do. Absolutely. So we are an end to end solution. So uh, or a turnkey company. So to, the, to where we're building the list and we also provide direct marketing services that includes uh, social media marketing, digital um, email, direct mail, creative design. And then we also provide data analytics, uh, data processing, um, customer profiling, like I talked about, and uh, lead generation services as well. Well, it's quite an offering. Um, within your company data set, can you provide hierarchies? We do. That's a great question. So we do have corporate linkage. Um, so, for example, Yum Brands um, is, is like a parent company and they own uh, the, all these other subsidiaries, uh, smaller restaurant types underneath it. And so we can show the, the, the headquarters, subsidiaries, and any branch locations under that hierarchy. That's great. We love to, within our platform, utilize that type of data to actually uh, create that linkage uh, natively in Salesforce. So, yep. you know, if the, if the data can get driven into the Salesforce record, we can move it around and link it up, and, and that's very helpful. Absolutely. Um, are there any freemiums or easy ways to kind of like try before you buy, maybe do a test list uh, to do match rates or, you know, find a, a list of people within or businesses within a certain vertical? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're more than willing to, 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 to work with anyone um, to provide sample lists. Um, you know, one thing that we do offer each customer is a free power analysis on their database. And, and that's going to show exactly what, what their current data looks like. Is it clean? Is it dirty? Um, here's how many businesses are, are currently are out of business right now. Um, here's how, missing, how many missing phone numbers you have. Here's how many duplicate records you have within your CRM or your file. Um, and, and it goes pretty in depth as well. So that is a free service that we offer um, to, to, to anyone. That's awesome. Um, in your person database, are there direct phone, mobile phone, or does it typically come with a corporate phone? What are the what are the available data points on the phone number level for a person, even home okay. phone? Yep, yep. So we do have landlines if if available, um, and we do have mobile phones as well on the consumer file. That's that's great. Um, you know, I know a lot of marketers who do data acquisition um, it's important to have some sort of device id when you acquire a list of people um, because as those people then engage with your, your your campaigns if if they visit your site and you don't have the id uh that that is basically letting them know who that person is they're still unknown to you uh, as they visit your site so um with your contact data set if i'm doing uh, B2B marketing, uh, is there a device ID that can come along with a person or a cookie? There is, so, so we can definitely onboard um, that information and, and provide device IDs, cookie IDs, IP addresses, and that sort of thing. That's wonderful. Um, tell us a little bit more, because I think you guys are really famous for this, about your telephone verification process and you know, where it sits and, and, and how, how unique it is. Yep, yep, great question, John. Um, so uh, again, I mean, we're one of the only, if not the only uh, company who will telephone verify every single business in our database. And we have an in-house call center of about 300 agents uh, who make over 20 million phone calls on an annual basis, uh, just making sure that our data is, is accurate and, and up to date as humanly possible. So putting that human approach on it, it's a quick 45 minute script. So, you, you know, it's, it's um, have I reached ABC company? Are you still at this address? Who's the main person in charge? 
um, what's their email address. Um, it, it, it's, it's pretty quick, but just want to make sure that we have all the right information before we provide data to, to a customer. That's awesome. Um, I just have a couple more questions and I know you answered one earlier, but I think I need it direct because it's, it, it's very um, relevant to our audiences. Um, how do you guys help build out ideal cu customer profiles or ideal account profiles? Yep. So if, if, if you're looking at a, a like, well, for example, we'll take in a customer's database. Here's all of our current customers, right? And we will profile those. So let's say if, if, if it's a B2B database, um, here's all of the uh, business names. Here's, here's all of the alike um, SIC codes uh, or, or NAICS codes. So here's all the main industries that you guys uh, have within your database. Um, here's the average employee size. Here's the average sales volume. Um, and, and then once we have that, those uh, firmographics built out, then we can build a lookalike audience uh, to go after for acquisition and, and do the same thing on the, on the consumer side. So what, what's the, are these homeowners? Are they renters? Um, what's their average income, age, are they married, do they have kids, et cetera, et cetera, and then build lookalike audiences on the consumer side uh, to go after for acquisition as well. So when you do that, that analysis, um, if the customer would like the output of the analysis so that mm -hmm. they could like build out their own scoring models within a propensity building you know, technology, or when the data is sitting in another database, right? Like once you've given the data and it's in the system and they would love to have that propensity modeling analysis, can you hand that the, the requirements off of how, what you found was their ideal kind of customer profile? Absolutely, John. So that will all come in the free power analysis that we can offer customers. Um, that report is very detailed and it's something that we would actually walk through with, with the customer because it is very in depth. Um, uh, but yes, uh, to answer your question, we would provide all that information so they can build their own uh, models. And that's pretty cool because we've actually seen that in play, those reports you give them, we can basically load right into the technology under the scoring application to yeah. utilize it uh, once the data is sitting in CRM to kind of uh, project that those are more important accounts or people than, you know, the other noise in the CRM. Um, so that's really cool. Um, lastly, you know, I want to ask you, how do you see um, that ring lead and data axle add value to each other and to the customers that we serve? You know, for, for, for your customers, I mean, uh, again, um, being able to hygiene and enrich current databases is, is a big thing. And then a, a lot of the times customers, um, your customers, able to build that profile and build lookalike audiences on top of that is, is huge. Um, and, and, you know, our customers being able to use your platform as well, um, uh, it, it's, it's going to be big as well. So the, the partnership awesome, yeah. I, I see working both ways for sure. Yeah. The way I'm seeing it is that, you know, our customers really want to, to make sure that their CRM and their marketing automation systems are in, in shape. And, and when they're connected with a tool like data axle, Right, we can get better profiles on the companies and the people, so that we can do better duplicate matching or merging. We can do better uh, person to account linking. If you know you got a bunch of personal emails in your system and you get a, a reverse uh, uh, up to business from a data axle, now we can match that to an account and make the link in the CRM. And we can also, you know, once you have provided rich profiles. Um, score that data within the CRM based on your analysis. And then lastly, you know, new data is all getting created all the time. And so Ringley basically connects to all the different areas where data is created, uh, enhancing it with the data axle information and allowing it to be utilized within the territory management and routing process. And so uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, very happy uh, individuals who have, uh, you know, implemented these types of strategies and and brian we really thank you for 
for joining us today and and, and yeah. teaching us all a lot more about data axle and and how that you guys can really you know help drive a go-to market strategy do you want to say anything uh as a yeah, um, you know, John, I, I appreciate the opportunity and, and look forward to the partnership and, and how we can help each other grow um, in, in the many years to come. Um, I, I see this being a, a very um, successful um, thing for, for both of us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us and uh, until next time. Okay. Thanks a lot, John.